Welcome to a new special technical comparison. In this video we want to compare the old Polaris and the new RDNA GPUs in our old 7850K APU machine. We choose this card since both cards are rather cheap and we want to look for differences in the GPU utilization while playing with a heavy CPU limit. This will probably be one of our last 7850K videos, since we want to move on to the 2400G for dedicated GPU benchmarks. If you still want to have the 7850K bench, just write your desired game in the comments and we will try to upload a bunch of benchmarks from time to time. We now start with the benchmarks and will make a detailed conclusion at the end of the video.
Auftragsmörder. Ich frage mich, ob er Steuern zahlt. Verstand wird sofort sehen, dass ich die besten Angebote auf dieser Seite des Pontra habe. Das beste Angebot wird bereit. zum Preis von Nein, das ist der Krug. Und du bist besoffen, Mann. Stehe darauf.
Now we talk about the benchmarks in detail. Rise of the Tomb Raider, for example, does not really benefit from the new RDNA architecture. Both cards are nearly on par with a small lead for the RX 570 in the minimum and maximum frames. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a game which likes the 5500 XT more. It has way better minimum frames and this helps a lot against low frame stuttering. GTA 5 on the other hand has a slightly favor towards the RX 570, but not enough to really say it would beat the RDNA U-Arch here. The Richer 3 is really hard to bench with the 7850K, since we have a big CPU bottleneck in the city and every run has different stutter areas. We would still say you should favor the 5500 XT here, because when you're outside of populated areas, the 5000 card can give you way more frames than the RX 570. Deus Ex Mankind Divided is another surprise, where the 5500 XT gives us way better minimum frames. Even when the RX 570 has a better max frames, the minimum frames are the frames that make a game really enjoyable. The Division 2 does slightly benefit more from the Polaris U-Arch, but after several hours playing we would not notice a difference between both cards. Too bad we didn't really measure the lows fine enough since there are too many random drops on both cards from time to time in game. Last but not least we had several problems with Armor 3 and our afterburner overlay on the RX 570. So we don't want to give a recommendation here. After all, Armor 3 is really a game which has a more than horrible optimization. Or better, it has no real optimization at all. Our conclusion is, we would strongly advise you to go for a new RDNA architecture, even if you have a rather old CPU. Not all games will benefit, but the shown ones are some kind of worst cases and if you don't have such a huge CPU bottleneck, the 5500 XT will always render more frames than any Polaris card while drawing less power out of the box. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for your subscription and support.